This video is to review some sample documents that you will see uh, sometimes as part of the negotiation stage where parties are attempting to finalize a contract. So uh, the first one is uh, something called a full corporate offer and this uh, involves a document that uh, was uh, submitted to negotiate a, uh, a sale and purchase of oil, Russian oil, called Rebco Russian uh, Export Blend uh, Crude Oil. So just to kind of review this, first they call it a full corporate offer. It's really unclear what that actually means, uh, but it's, you know, it's very official sounding and uh, and that's probably why the document is labeled like this. Uh, the oil's originating in Russian, Russia. The quantity is 100,000 metric tons, plus or minus 5%. Uh, the contract period is 12 months, and you see the INCO term FOB uh, in Novorossiysk. So this is the delivery point. Now the, uh, the price uh, is the... Um, uh, is the price uh, terms FOB Black Sea or Baltic Sea port calculated based on Platts crude oil. So they are attempting to define the price on the oil. And uh, it's fixed in US dollars, so we have a currency in this document. And there's some uh, physical characteristics of the oil that are identified uh, as well. Uh, payment terms are within five banking days, so these are banking days uh, after signing of the contract. And the buyer's bank is to issue an irrevocable bank guarantee in the amount of 500 million uh, U.S. dollars, valid for one year uh, and uh, 30 days. So this is really a, a pretty astronomical amount of money that they are asking for someone to issue an irrevocable bank guarantee of 500 million dollars. Uh, this sounds more like the total shipment over a period of a year rather than what is more likely going to happen, a shipment more or less on a monthly basis. They want a performance bond, 2% performance bond in the event there's a default. And, uh, <clears throat> and then we see some of the uh, technical terms as to the content of the oil that uh, they would be shipping. So that is... Uh, kind of what we have for this, what they call a full corporate offer. And, uh, in the per and you know, these serve a useful purpose. They are designed to kind of get people communicating and talking and, uh, you know, sharing ideas. So it's very natural to, to have something like this. <clears throat> this document, uh, again, this is uh, just like the other document. This is another document that it's a real document came across my desk with the uh, names of the parties uh, deleted and, and a buyer and seller simply represented uh, in, in this document. Uh, so here, um, what we have is uh, a document from the uh, address to the seller, <coughs> which is a U.S. company, and, uh, <coughs> or actually is this, sorry, it's written uh, to the seller, which is Finland, uh, to a U.S. company, and uh, the buyer is represented by the president and another company, so there are two parties involved here, and they're both acting on the basis of resolutions from companies of the board of directors, uh, which is, you know, the point they're making here is the point we did earlier in this course where we're saying if you're dealing with an agent of a company, the question is do they actually have authority uh, to negotiate this deal and what they're representing is yes they actually have a, a board resolution so at some point you would probably want to see that board resolution just to confirm that you are dealing with someone who has authority. Now uh, we wish to sign the SPA only with the actual seller who can demonstrate the ownership with allocation numbers, et cetera. Financially, we are uh, RWA, as well as able to place the products directly with product refineries or end users. Located as close as possible to the seller's port of loading makes the distance for CAF cargoes as close as possible for the seller. And they also mention FOB and CIF. So you see the, uh, the use of the INCO terms here, 
Uh, notice they do not designate INCO 2000, INCO 2010, or some other INCO. Uh, so there's some ambiguity here, so you'd want to clarify that. But what's a little more troubling is the use of these kinds of abbreviations, SPA, RWA. Uh, INCO terms are certainly accepted uh, abbreviations uh, standardized by the International Chamber of Commerce, but these other terms like SPA, RWA, you see something like that, you, you know, you, you think to yourself, you can't spell out what you mean. I mean, why don't you be more specific what these terms mean? And it's just vague. And the point I would make here is that if you get a document like this with these kinds of abbreviations, it's, in one sense, it's a negotiation tactic because they're trying to maybe intimidate you into expecting you to know what these terms mean. But you shouldn't be intimidated by them. You should say, well, what does that mean? I mean, you know, and um, don't let them try to get the upper hand with something as, you know, mundane as uh, obtuse abbreviations that just obscure issues. So what does SPA mean? Well, SPA means the... Um, <clears throat> means the uh, supply purchase agreement. You can't say the supply purchase agreement. RWA. RW mean, R, RWA means ready, willing, and able. So you can't say financially we are RWA. <laughs> uh, we are ready, willing, and able. I mean, why do you have to use an abbreviation that obscures uh, something as simple as that? Um, so here is in the other letter, we have product description, uh, uh, 2 million barrels of uh, Repco, um, 100,000 uh, metric tons of Russian uh, D2 uh, uh, gas oil, and point of delivery, any safe port. So they're, you know, we're trying to negotiate this. And here's the price, FOB, and... Um, and they don't have a price CIF, presumably, because they don't have a, a port to reference that to. Um, the payment is irrevocable documentary letter of credit, non-transferable, uh, payable on a load-by-load -load basis CIF to the buyer's dispatch or FOB when all documents are Q and Q at loading ports. So, again, we see these kind of abbreviations. Now, we course we expect an irrevocable letter of credit non-transferable that would be a fairly standard type thing and this makes more sense in the, in the sense that this is on a load by load basis uh, unlike the other letter they seem to be asking for some type of bank guarantee for an entire year for an astronomical amount of money here you know they simply want this payment on a month by month basis and uh, Q and Q, quality and quantity. Why don't you say quality and quantity? Uh, again, it just creates obfuscation where you really shouldn't have something like that. Um, proof of product with export license. Uh, here we have specifications uh, for the D2 gas oil. And... Uh, they also give us uh, those specifications in Russian. So, uh, you know, and it would be quite common to have, uh, have dual languages for international transactions. But if you have something like that, you want a clause in there that says if there is a conflict between the two languages, which language will control? And, I mean, here you see, you know, both the English paraffins and the Russian, but if there were a conflict here, which would control? And, you know, you probably want to say the language you are most comfortable in. And again, it's not uncom uh, uncommon to see this because the party signing the document, the party who actually has authority to sign the document, may not understand English or may have a, a, a poor understanding of English so uh, they're actually going by their native language. So it's not uncommon to see, uh, see that kind of uh, dual language. Um, 